Clear skies for travel days today, but what about the holiday weekend? Your forecast coming up. An Amber Alert based in Colorado is resolved in Utah tonight. What we're learning about the investigation that helped rescue a young girl from a frightening situation. Making up for lost time, as many families were forced to spend the 2020 holiday season apart, things are returning back to normal. We'll share some emotional reunions at the Salt Lake Airport. Animal rescues are filling up the plea from shelters to come here and adopt. And those who needed a helping hand now giving back ahead of Thanksgiving. How an Eagle Mountain restaurant is paying it forward in a way that is positively Utah. Live from Utah's news leader, Fox 13 News at 9 starts right now. So glad you're with us tonight, everyone. Thanksgiving is just hours away. So what will the weather be like for all of your gatherings with family and friends? Let's get right to Fox 13 meteorologist Allison Croken. I'll Alice. tell you what, a cold morning tomorrow, but great driving conditions here across the state. Right now, 33 degrees here in Salt Lake feels like 29. So if you have to run out and do any last minute errands right now, it's certainly chilly out there. But we do have clear sky from the Cache Valley down through Ogden, Layton, Salt Lake and down into Utah County. Even in the southwestern Utah, your main concern right now is some gusty conditions towards St. George. But right now, our temperatures here across the state, close to 30 to 35 for Ogden and Salt Lake, Provo upper 20s, and St. George just shy of 50 degrees. And look at that wind right now. That's also close to 50 at about 40 miles per hour right now. Some noticeable wind out there. Thanksgiving here in Salt Lake City, a cold start tomorrow morning in the mid 20s at 8 o'clock in the morning into the 30s by about 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Those temperatures will be rising just two hours later into the 40s around lunchtime tomorrow. So coming up, how long will this dry weather last? I'll let you know what you can expect for this upcoming holiday travel weekend coming up. Allison, thank you. After a year that saw big decreases in air travel, this Thanksgiving, people are flying again to visit their loved ones. Fox 13's John Franke reports from Salt Lake International Airport tonight, where some long-awaited reunions are taking place. Crowds are pretty wide here now, as most everyone has arrived at their destinations for the Thanksgiving holiday. But it's estimated the number of passengers to travel through this airport this year is double than just a year ago. That means many families who are forced to stay apart because of the threat of COVID-19 in 2020 are once again spending the holidays together. I'm actually surprising my family, so I'm hoping that they're not watching this. Billy Carson wasn't at an airport last Thanksgiving. I actually stayed by myself at home just because I was nervous to travel, and I feel like since things have gotten better, and it feels much better. Like so many others, Billy now feels safe returning to the skies. She met her loved ones at the airport for a long-awaited embrace before oh, surprising okay. family at home, and she wasn't alone. Family after family reconnecting in the terminal. All of my family is here, so it's very nice to get out. Today, the airport estimates 26,000 people either arrived or departed. Last year during the pandemic, we had about 13,500 people coming through the front door. So we're getting very close to getting to the pre-pandemic number. A long-awaited return to normalcy. If we have the masks on, everyone washes their hands, for, we'll be good to go. A holiday season the way it's meant to be. We are so thankful to have all of our passengers back. So people are traveling again, they're much more comfortable doing so, and we welcome them. Today did not break any records for the number of travelers to pass through this airport, but Sunday could. So if you're headed out here this weekend, of course, give yourself plenty of time. And in the meantime, enjoy that quality time that you may have missed with your loved ones. Happy Thanksgiving. At Salt Lake International, John Franke, Fox 13 News, Utah. Now on to a developing story tonight. A 13-year-old girl from Aurora, Colorado, who was at the center of an Amber Alert, was found safe in Utah earlier today. Now, we're not identifying her because she is a minor, but the girl was reported missing last night after she left home. Authorities in Colorado say a man by the name of Navarro Cathay was a suspect in her disappearance. It was just this afternoon. Utah Highway Patrol troopers saw the vehicle Kathy was driving on westbound I-70 right near Green River. UHP took him into custody. After a high-speed chase, the girl was inside the car. We think she was just communicating with him online, either through social media channels or other means that we're trying to determine and, and find out exactly how their communication was. Uh, but it was through investigators looking through phones and computers that they kind of uh, identified him as a potential person of interest. Charges against Kathy are pending. Authorities are working to reunite the girl with her family tonight.
Also tonight, a 61-year-old man is recovering in the hospital after an accident at Brighton Ski Resort. Unified police say the man was skiing with his son this morning in an area of the resort where they had snowmaking machines. The son told police they were skiing down a run when the snow came off the machines, covered their goggles, and reduced their vision. It was at that point authorities say the father ran into a snowbank and suffered severe facial trauma. He suffered from some sort of medical episode. Uh, Brighton Scuba Patrol did respond, um, transported into their clinic. They worked on him for over an hour um, before they were able to get him up to life flight and transported to the University of Utah Medical Center. At last check, the victim remains in extremely critical condition tonight. We will keep you updated as we learn more. University of Utah Police and School Administration are investigating a hate crime that happened in September. They say two students allegedly shouted the N-word and threw sunflower seeds and coffee pods out the window of their room at a residence hall, hitting a contractor making a delivery. The school says the incident was immediately reported to them. They identified the students responsible and held them accountable through the conduct process. University President Taylor Randall released a statement saying, let me be clear, racist and hateful behavior on our campus is an offense to our entire community, particularly our communities of color. These actions will be called out for what they are, behaviors rooted in hate and racism. The Council on American-Islamic Relations, the nation's largest Muslim civil rights and advocacy organization, reacted with a statement saying, we condemn this alleged hate incident and thank University of Utah officials for their swift action in investigating the reported racist behavior of the students. In 2020, the loneliness of the pandemic sent many people to stores and shelters, eager for the company of a furry friend. But now... Utah shelters are seeing an overflow of pets being left behind and now in need of a home. Fox 13's Emily Tenser has the story from Tooele. All right, thank you. And then it'll just be $10. Lene Lewis collects a surrendered cat and takes her to the back room. Come on, kitty, kitty. Another feline to add to the list of many up for adoption. Lulu, the eight-month-old calico, tries to make sense of the bars in front of her. This is the reality for a lot of pets right now. The Tooele City Animal Shelter is calling 2021 the year of pet abandonment. 2020, we were running out of animals to adopt out. And 2021, we can't find enough homes for the number of animals coming into the shelter. Signs outside the shelter state they're at maximum capacity for cats. And if they keep on coming, the shelter will have to reach out to rescues to take them in. That's typically where our overflow goes to but even the rescues are full, so. Eight of the 10 dog cages are full right now, and seven-year-old Honey takes up one of them. Now, Lewis says dog numbers tend to fluctuate, but cats are always in need of adoption. And we do have times where the cats are low too, but that's usually when a rescue comes in and says, hey, I have 20 spaces, I can take 20 cats. With the holiday season approaching, Lewis says any of these pets would make a great present this year. All of them, absolutely. <laughs> From Lulu, the new calico on the block, to Tozies, the cat with thumbs, or this girl. <laughs> this is Littles, and she has a little bit of an attitude. <laughs> She's been waiting for her forever home the longest out of all cats. It's hard because you love every single one of the animals that come to the shelter, but we're just hopeful for the best with each one. In Tooele, Emily Tenser, Fox 13 News, Utah. Coming up, a wildlife group is asking UDOT to make changes to a Summit County highway. What they'd like them to do and how UDOT is responding. And we will introduce you to an Eagle Mountain restaurant that's giving back in a big way for Thanksgiving this year. It is a positively Utah story you do not want to miss. Tonight, Cottonwood Heights police need your help finding two suspects in an armed robbery. Take a good look here. Police posted these photos on social media of the men they're looking for. They're accused of robbing the Home Depot in Cottonwood Heights. They were seen driving away in a red Ford Focus. If you recognize any of these suspects or see the red car, call Cottonwood Heights Police. A wildlife group is asking UDOT to make changes to a highway between I-80 and Park City. They say there's an alarming number of drivers hitting deer and moose. And that can be so dangerous. Fox 13's Lauren Steinbrecher shows us how UDOT is responding. 
On SR-224 lie scattered signs of animals that tried to scurry across, of cars that came to a screeching halt. We've had moose and deer and elk hit recently, almost on a daily basis. Save people, save wildlife has been keeping an eye on this road from Kimball Junction down to Park City. They're concerned by what they see. It was sad to see a baby moose and their mother get killed. According to a report published by UDOT of vehicle animal collisions across the state, SR-224 is considered the fifth biggest hotspot. They and a local community member started two petitions, now signed by thousands, for change. And the group meets with UDOT as well as local leaders just to complain. We have seen study through study time after time that wildlife crossings with corresponding fencing do reduce these collisions from anywhere to 70 to 90 percent. Safe People Save Wildlife would love to see a wildlife underpass, much like this pedestrian one that goes under SR-224. But they say a project like this could take years. So they're hoping for some short-term solutions until then. But if we can get 45 mile an hour speed limit consistently from Kimball Junction all the way into town, that'll, I think it'll make a difference. And then and along with that needs to come enforcement. With any issue, you want to find out exactly what you're dealing with. UDOT says they're studying the issue now and that they've seen success with the wildlife overpass on I-80 installed a few years ago. We want to have a clear understanding of, of the issue and this area and see how it compares to other areas that are nearby. They say they want to make sure any proposed solutions serve the intended purpose. Save people, save wildlife is hoping that soon. There are options. We can work together. In Summit County, Lauren Steinbrecher, Fox 13 News, Utah. During this time of year, many organizations and restaurants provide food for people in need. Tonight, Fox 13's Brian Schnee shares why one Eagle Mountain restaurant owner gives back now and year-round in a way that is positively Utah. It's the little deli on the corner that feels bigger when you walk inside. We'll be here seven years in February. It features a touch of New York City. But Six Sisters Deli and Grill is in Eagle Mountain. Our community has embraced us. Uh, we've always wanted to be that hometown gathering place, and it seems like the last several years we've seen that kind of come to fruition. With a love of food and family, Monica Rogers is seeing her years of hard work pay off. Now she's thankful to be able to give back. Years past, we've had the opportunity to open our home and our deli here. And so on Thanksgiving Day between noon and four, we do an open house where we invite one and all, anybody to join us and to just come and, and have a plate, a conversation and be part of our little community here. For those looking for a meal on Thanksgiving, it's the traditional spread put together by volunteers and employees. We've had lots of great, amazing employees that have come through and this has been always been more about family than sandwiches. It's not just about giving on Thanksgiving, but giving those who need a job a chance. Um, about two and a half years, I'd say. Her employees range from high schoolers working their very first job to retirees looking for more to adults down on their luck needing to get on the right path. Here's a kid who just really didn't even know like what what he want, where he wanted to go and do, and he could have went and worked for his uncle, but he came to work for me instead. <laughs> so this is Joe. Over the years, it's the employees from all walks of life that have shined for Monica, including some who have been fighting their own battles that have been taken too soon. We love you, those, those um, Aaron, Eric, and uh, Jacob. We lost Jacob, was one of my sons last year, um, took his life. Uh, after a hard army service. So whether it's giving back with a Thanksgiving meal or a place to work. The first couple years were rough, not gonna lie, but we've been, had the opportunity to be able to stick it through and uh, couldn't do it without the people of Eagle Mountain. Both can be found inside of that little deli on the corner. Um, you never know who's gonna come, but those who, those who will need to come will come. In Eagle Mountain, Brian Schnee, Fox 13 News, Utah. Turkey Bowl is less than 12 hours away now. You should be stretching, Bob. I should be. <laughs> yes, start now. <laughs> That's a fun tradition. In my family, um, go along, you know, Kelly. We don't do a turkey bowl. Got it. We do Thanksgiving bingo, and that's a big hit. Oh, oh that's nice. Right.
Yeah, lots yeah, of little fun prizes to win, and that's our holiday tra mm -hmm. tradition. What about you, Allison? You're probably starting some new ones with I know. Fiance. This is my first holiday with the fiancé, my first holiday season. He mentioned something about, like, oh, we should run a 5K on Thanksgiving morning, and I was like, I, just, I don't that's know if I signed. That's a great idea, actually. I don't know. Allison. Did we agree to that when we got engaged? Uh I'm not sure. Maybe we can chat about it. It's a possibility. No. <laughs> tomorrow morning's going to be a cold start. How about we just go walk the dog tomorrow? That sounds like a fantastic idea to me. High pressure, the main story. We are going to have some Valley Inversions returning. Whatever you're doing tomorrow, or maybe you're not celebrating Thanksgiving, uh, hopefully you've got some nice plans just to relax and enjoy what's going to be a cold day, but still a pretty day. Gorgeous evening from our Deer Valley Bald Mountain camera. You can see the stars in the sky. Jordan L off in the distance. Some lights from 40 right there. Can't really tell right now, but uh, the camera that I was checking throughout the day today at Bald Mountain, just not a whole lot of snow right now up at Deer Valley on Bald Mountain on that particular camera. 33 degrees here in Salt Lake City. Feels like 29. We've got the lights twinkling across the valley right now. Hopefully you're cozying up for a nice long weekend. But you've got clear sky across southern Utah. We had clear sky behind a cold front today. We saw some valley inversions that ended up mixing out. We will see those strengthening again here over the next couple of days. So right now what it feels like, just a moment of silence for our warm temperatures that are long gone. It's going to be about 20 degrees when you wake up tomorrow morning for any of those football games, for those turkey trots, for the 5K, whatever you have going on tomorrow morning here in Salt Lake City. It'll be a cold and clear start, mid-20s until about 9 a.m. Then you're back into the 30s, so absolutely bundle up tomorrow morning. Grab some hot cocoa as you're heading out the door because you're going to have a chilly, chilly start. If you're going to be waking up 7 o'clock in Provo, 23 degrees, 13 for Park City close to 15 to 20 for Logan and Evanston. And then by tomorrow afternoon, it's even 15 tomorrow in Cedar City. St. George close to freezing tomorrow morning. And then by tomorrow afternoon, Salt Lake mid 40s, Park City low 40s, Moab 47, St. George around 60 degrees. And then heading into tomorrow afternoon, by two o'clock, we're going to have those temperatures around 40 to 45 for Logan, Provo, Salt Lake, and Ogden. And then for future cast, do want to point out there will be a line of thunderstorms impacting a lot of the country. Take a look at this all the way, even up towards Toronto, down through the southeast, Louisiana. Uh, we're going to see some storms possible through Thursday afternoon. And then for St. George, you're close to 60 tomorrow, low 60s for Friday. And then by Saturday and Sunday, we'll have those temperatures in the mid 60s as Hanukkah starts in the next week. Those temperatures close to 70 for St. George. Here along the Wasatch Front, we have mid 40s tomorrow. Hayes returns Friday, Saturday, Sunday into early next week. Mid 50s to low 50s for this upcoming weekend. And we'll continue with those temperatures into the 50s through the middle of next week. Coming up later in the hour, I'll let you know what you can expect for our next chance for storms because it's ski season now. So do we have any fresh powder in the forecast? I'll let you know. All right, thank you, Allison. Ahead on Fox 13 News at 9, we'll show you the new mural that's meant to inspire people in southern Utah and bring hope to the LGBTQ community. And just a reminder, so you don't forget, when you can't watch Fox 13 News Live, you can always watch us streaming online for free. You can find us on Roku, Fire TV, and Apple TV. All you have to do is search Fox 13 on your device. We'll be right back. A new mural meant to inspire communication between parents and children can now be viewed by the public in St. George. The Go Together mural is an active or interactive piece featuring Southern Utah's beauty and actual bicycles you can ride. It's supposed to be a fun way to build strong parent-child relationships. The mural is a collaboration between Encircle, Parents Empowered, and other organizations. I think this is a general message to all parents that maybe if you your child's journey and who they are is different than you may have anticipated it would be, you you jump on with them and you go on that journey with them. And I think sometimes that journey ends up even being more beautiful than the journey we thought we would take with our children. The mural's message is especially meaningful to LGBTQ children as they face higher risk of suicide and dangerous drug and alcohol behavior. 
Well, tonight, the mayors of both Mill Creek and Holiday cut the ribbon on a major infrastructure project that's been a long time coming. The project has been a partnership between Mill Creek and Holiday since each city owns half of the street. The project cost about $8.7 million. However, state transportation organizations funded the entire project with no financial burden on residents of Mill Creek or Holiday. It was much, much needed, but also it, it starts, I think, a connection, an important bike connection, active transportation connection that will go from 215, I think, clear down to 11. 3900 South Road stretches from 23rd East to the I-215 East Belt. Right now it has some big improvements like new pavement, bike lanes, and new street lights. Coming up in our next half hour, as we begin to gather, doctors have a warning for everyone what they recommend when it comes to COVID precautions and parties. And could the sales tax on food in Utah be a thing of the past? We are going to show you the push to make it history here in the Beehive State. And could fasting before an intense workout give you health benefits in the long run? What a new study from BYU has found. likely know this, tomorrow marks the second Thanksgiving during the COVID-19 pandemic. Fox 13's Haley Higgins compares it to last year's holiday and looks at why healthcare workers are worried. We're actually in a near mirror image of where we were going into Thanksgiving last year. High case counts and hospitalizations remain a big problem this Thanksgiving holiday. Intermountain healthcare physicians say hospitalizations have met the peak that was experienced in early December 2020. We are bursting at the seams. We've never had more COVID patients in the hospital than we do now. But there are differences too. Unlike 2020, other non-COVID respiratory viruses are putting people in the hospital, including RSV, croup, and influenza. This is creating a significant strain on, on our system. Um, we also hear about our colleagues at Primary Children's, as well as all the hospitals in the States, are having to make really tough decisions. We want to be able to care for everybody who needs care. Utah remains in the top 10 for highest COVID rates in the country. Much like last year, physicians expect to see a large post Thanksgiving surge. The biggest game changer this year though, the widespread access to vaccinations. Vaccines are very effective and we're telling people you can safely gather if you've been vaccinated. Doctors suggest those who haven't received a COVID shot should sit this Thanksgiving out. In Salt Lake City, Haley Higgins, Fox 13 News, Utah. Adenovirus is also making the rounds in Utah. That's the virus that causes the common cold, tonsillitis, and bronchiolitis, which can look a lot like COVID-19. Doctors say it's important to test early and often, just in case. Listen to this. A new BYU study finds exercising intensely at the start of a fast may help maximize health benefits. Now, for the study, one group started fasting without exercise. The other started with a workout. The theory is the exercise burns through a lot of the body's glucose, prompting a quicker transition into ketosis. Now, ketosis breaks down stored fat for energy, making chemicals called ketones. Ketones are a healthy energy source for the brain and heart. They help fight diseases like diabetes, cancer, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's. Researchers we spoke with say you should ease into this practice should you try it. Yeah, you should be careful, I suppose, uh, with, as you do this. You know, uh, if you're, especially if you're sedentary, not doing much, a little older, uh, maybe a little overweight, you know, metabolically unhealthy, you know, that should be thoughtful. You should be thoughtful about how fast and how hard you start your exercise. The researchers behind this study say you should always consult with your doctor before making any drastic changes to your lifestyle. 20% of Utahns that experienced food insecurity. It's time for Utah to eliminate the food tax. There is a renewed push to eliminate the sales tax on food in Utah. As Fox 13 News first reported last week, the state has a surplus of hundreds of millions of dollars. And now, Bob, some community leaders say it is time to share that wealth with needy families. Here's Fox 13's Ben Winslow. Hallelujah. 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 H
A gospel song kicked off an effort by religious leaders, anti-hunger activists, and Democratic lawmakers to eliminate the sales tax on food. Even the tax collectors came to be baptized. With the Utah state legislature seeing as much as a billion dollars in revenues and surplus, they say it's time to eliminate the sales tax on groceries. I just can't imagine it being okay to, to stockpile a billion dollars and then say, well, we're going to take $14 from everybody. Reverend Vanetta Golf and Wilkerson runs a food pantry in West Valley City. We've been hitting record numbers, over 200 families in a two-hour period, two, three-hour period. Utah is one of 13 states that still has a sales tax on food. Anti-hunger activists say it harms lower-income families. The grocery tax is the most impactful one for low-income families when it comes to sort of your day-to-day -day existence. The legislature has consistently rejected the idea of eliminating a sales tax on groceries, but in an interview with Fox 13, Governor Spencer Cox did not oppose the idea. We're looking at it for sure. But the governor says it may not be a repeal on the tax on food. We are going to do a, a tax cut this year. Um, I, I think there's there's broad agreement on that. What that looks like, um, we're working on some ideas around that. Um, maybe a, a tax credit for families uh, that will help them with food and, uh, and, and with the rising inflation that we're seeing right now. People who are living day to day, paycheck to paycheck, can't wait for a rebate to come at the end of the year. And some of these people don't make enough money to file in the first place. It's just not um, the best solution. Democrats will try to push a bill in the next legislative session. I hope that as a legislature, we don't squander the opportunity. But if the legislature refuses to act, some warn a citizen ballot initiative is possible. I don't even want to talk about a ballot initiative. I think we're, that the legislature is when but they look possible. at, and I think it's possible, yeah. On the Hill, Ben Winslow, Fox 13 News, Utah. Still ahead, a man is speaking out after a road sign crashed right into his car on his way to work. Who's now footing the bill after this freak accident? And we'll have a clear start to your Thanksgiving tomorrow. Some very cold temperatures and then haze returns coming up. We'll let you know if we have any storms on the horizon. Oh gosh, imagine this if you can. You're driving down the interstate, I-15, and then out of nowhere, suddenly, a work zone sign comes crashing into your car. Oh my. Yeah, that would be scary, wouldn't it? Yeah. And it's what happened to a Lehigh man while he was on his way to work earlier this week. Mm. Fox 13's Eliana Sheriff found out who pays for the damage after this bizarre accident. In my head, I was thinking, I just gotta get to work quick. It was a true case of the Mondays for Michael Powell. It didn't seem that windy at all. Around 9 a.m. Monday, while driving on I-15 toward his work near the airport, Michael got an unwelcome surprise as an orange work zone sign smashed into the front of his car. My first thought when I saw the sign was, this is going to come through my windshield. I was really scared for my life for, the, for a little bit. I didn't want to get hit by a sign, so I tried swerving, and it ended up hitting the front left side of my car instead. He took pictures and filed a police report a few hours later, and he's working with UDOT and even turned to the popular online community Reddit for advice. People were really helpful on there. UDOT spokesperson John Gleason says he took the right actions. If you're involved in any type of an incident on the freeway that causes damage to your car, you know, pull off to the uh, next exit. We don't want people stopping on the freeway itself. It's just too dangerous. But pull over at the next exit when it's safe and, uh, and, and call in, make a police report. Michael, unfortunately, had just got his car back from the shop, and now he has to take it back in. It's going to cost a couple hundred dollars upwards, maybe close to a thousand. It's, it's a lot of damage to the front end of my car. Since the sign was from a work zone, this will likely go through the contractor's insurance. If it was determined that, that the damage was a result of negligence on the uh, contractor, then that's how they would determine uh, any, any type of responsibility there. Michael is hoping he can get his car fixed once and for all. We've heard a lot of stories about things like these not getting resolved the way they should, and a lot of people end up just having to pay out of pocket anyways. Eliana Sheriff, Fox 13 News, Utah. Well, Michael filed a police report, and he's also in contact with UDOT to find whatever contractor the sign belongs to and who he can file a claim with.
Still ahead, a huge push to support small businesses in Utah. How you can help while crossing items off your holiday shopping list. The Cougars, Thunderbirds, and T-Birds, all, Wolverines, all play basketball tonight. And two won tournament championships. And the Jazz tonight in Oklahoma City to take on the Thunder. Always a tough matchup. The highlights are on the way. First one of the night and a bucket put down. It was a very happy Thanksgiving Eve for more than 3,500 people as they picked up a meal free of charge. It's thanks to the Crossroads Urban Center, Utah Food Bank, and Harmons. Fox 13 Spencer Joseph shows us how a Thanksgiving meal can go a long way. Cars snake their way around the Smith's Ballpark parking lot. All waiting to see. Yes, ma'am. Be glad to. Doug Kermer. Happy Thanksgiving. Because Doug is delivering happiness. Thank you so much. In the form of turkeys. We need to have you helping. Gobble, gobble in the trunk. And even though it's hard work. That's why I took the coat off. In these cold temperatures. Bye-bye. It's worth it. You got a loose passenger back here. This turkey is as big as you guys are. There's a tremendous need in the community, and I just feel good when I get to participate myself. He's one of the many volunteering at this year's Crossroads Urban Center, Utah Food Bank, Harmon's Thanksgiving food giveaway to feed Utah's hungry. Enjoy the meal. It's going awesome, babe. We'll see you. And with car after car, you got that memorized. It means a meal on the table for Thursday. Food insecurity is huge here and everywhere else, but just to know that there's something on the Thanksgiving table is warms your heart. So with every car racing, to get their turkey. Indy 500. It's an opportunity to address those insecurities. It's between going hungry for Thanksgiving. This is Debbie Garcia. Are coming and doing this. And she's one of the over 3,700 who will be fed. I am so grateful every year that they have done this. Yeah, we have a, a pretty high rate of food insecurity in this state. While there are a lot in need, for the Crossroads Urban Center, there's a lot willing to give, too. It's really incredible. We have this beautiful problem every year of having too many volunteers. It's like a high of 40 degrees today, and people are willing to come out and stand for three hours to hold frozen turkeys and walk them into people's cars. Like That is such an act of generosity and kindness and community like I rarely see. So as the turkeys keep on coming from Doug Kerman. Thank you so much. Happy Thanksgiving, man. Have a good one, guys. It's a little Goodbye. weight off those in need this holiday season. If I didn't have this, like I said, Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving would be very different. Spencer Joseph, Fox 13 News, Utah. Great to see there. Salt Lake City Mayor Aaron Mendenhall, also local business owners, want to keep the momentum going for small business Saturday. It's this weekend. It's estimated more than 50% of every dollar spent locally stays in the community, as opposed to less than 15% when you shop at the big chain stores. Some business owners say there has been a silver lining to the COVID pandemic in terms of people looking to spend their hard-earned dollars closer to home. People want to stay local. They want to take care of each other. It's been a tough two years, and we pivoted pretty early, like a lot of businesses did. Made it possible to pick up without touching, order online, call us. We'll talk to you over the phone and remind people that we're your neighbors, we're your friends, and we're all in this together. And more than ever, people have really supported that message. Also, as an added incentive, by shopping small, you can win big. Just sign up at one of these participating businesses for a chance to win a $500 gift card. I apologize, those businesses aren't listed on your screen, but we'll have them online. That's right. Yeah, all the information about that on our website, fox13now.com. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has brought back its giving machines. <laughs> These young dancers helped launch the special vending machines at City Creek Center today. These vending machines don't have candy or soda in them. Instead, you buy things like school supplies, dance shoes, and even goats for people all over the world. And be blessed by giving so we celebrate this season of the year. The giving machines are in cities from Honolulu to New York. The one in Orem opened yesterday. So many opportunities to get involved this season here oh, in the yeah. state. Yeah, good ones as well. 
Here we are, Thanksgiving Eve, another holiday season upon us. Thanks everyone for being with us. Allison, let's talk about the weather, what people can expect, whether they're staying close to home, maybe they're expecting some visitors tomorrow from yes. afar. So? If you're going to be traveling by car tomorrow, no problems. The only thing I can foresee being potentially an issue for tomorrow is just how cold it's going to be first thing tomorrow morning. And then we'll have some more haze returning this upcoming weekend. But right now it's 33 degrees in Salt Lake, 33 for Ogden, 29 for Provo. Air quality right Right now for our PM 2.5 and our ozone, that's good for Thursday and Friday. We do have voluntary action for Salt Lake County with the forecast of moderate air quality. So we have high pressure. Our main story, what that's going to mean is we're going to have some dry and mild conditions and also some valley inversions building. So your hour by hour forecast through 9 o'clock tomorrow morning will be close to freezing for Provo, Salt Lake, and Ogden for the few hours leading up to 9 a.m. So if you're an early riser getting up at 5 or 6 tomorrow morning to get a head start on cooking, you'll have some very chilly temperatures. So it'll be close to 20 to 30 for almost all of you first thing tomorrow morning. And then by Thursday at 3 p.m., Thanksgiving afternoon, our temperatures will be close to 40 to 45 degrees for Ogden, Salt Lake, and Provo. St. George, upper 50s for your Thanksgiving. It'll be below freezing first thing tomorrow morning around freezing Friday morning. 61 for a high on Friday, mid 60s this upcoming weekend as Hanukkah starts on Sunday. For the Wasatch Front, here's your super seven day forecast where I can go ahead and just click on each day and get you some more in depth information. So for tomorrow, it'll start the morning in the mid 20s. We'll be in the 30s until about 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. So a cold start for your Thanksgiving. By Friday, mostly cloudy sky. And let's go ahead and talk about some headlines. Our temperatures are going to be warming up as we end the week. We'll have some valley inversions returning, but some nice temperatures this weekend. And there's no major storms in the forecast. By Saturday, if you are going to go out, do some skiing. Highs here in the valleys will be about 50, but it's going to be colder up in the mountains. You'll have those temperatures in the mid-20s, 8 a.m., 10 a.m., even through lunchtime on Saturday around freezing. By Sunday, 54 degrees for a high. If you're having brunch with your family before they leave town, they're going to have temperatures in the mid-30s first thing on Sunday morning. So if you're hoping to get a little walk in before heading out and going for a road trip, you'll have very cool temperatures first thing Sunday morning into the 40s though by 10 a.m. And into early next week, sunny sky on Monday as we go ahead and pull this future cast for you just so you can see what to expect across the region on Monday. So dry conditions here over the next several days. And then we'll keep it in the mid 50s through next Tuesday and Wednesday. And as we look at our extended outlook for days 6 to 10, we're looking dry here across the state. So we're going to have dry conditions here across the region into next week. After a tough loss at home to the Memphis Grizzlies, the Utah Jazz back on the court tonight on the road against Oklahoma City Thunder. Always tough to play the Jazz, even without one of their top players, Shea Gilgis Alexander. We pick it up in the second quarter. Jordan Clarkson throws it up for Rudy Gobert. The alley-oop jam. But the Jazz trailed by three at the half. Third quarter now. Donovan Mitchell, Boyan Bogdanovich. Corner three is good. He finished with 19 points. Mike Conley then pushes it up the court, pulls up, hits the three. He had an 18 points for the Jazz. Seems like Lou Dort plays like an all-star every time he plays against the Jazz. Drives and scores. He led the Thunder with 27 points. Now in the fourth quarter, Rudy Gay, strong game for the Jazz off the bench. Three is money. He scored 15 for the Jazz. And I love this play from Gobert. The steal, and the big guy takes it all the way to the rim. He had 15 points, 17 rebounds. It was tight down the stretch. Josh Giddy, the rookie, hits the three to tie it up at 101. But then Mitchell took over, pulls up, and hits the jumper. He only had 13 points in this game, but scored six straights for the Jazz down the stretch, then drives it all the way, put the game away. The Jazz won at 110, 104. They are now 12 and 6 this season. 18th ranked BYU took on Texas Southern at home at the Merritt Center. Foos Traore gets to miss and the throwdown. The big freshman had 13 points and 6 rebounds. Here's another BYU big on the run. Gavin Baxter, head of the pack, rocks the rim. He had BYU 11 13 at the half. 
Second half now, it's Baxter who follows up the miss. He finished with 11 points, so the two centers playing well for BYU. We know they can do well close to the basket, but how about from outside? Foose left alone, so he puts up the three. BYU won it 81-64. The Cougs are 5-0. and Utah Valley and Southern Utah also had big wins. This is basketball, not baseball. My bad. <laughs> the Wolverines beat Nichols State 74-63 win the first ever social challenge. UVU is off to their best start in team history at 5-1. And, and the Thunderbirds beat Bowling Green to win the Palms Division Championship of the Rocket Mortgage Fort Myers tip-off. Tournament isn't long enough to say. It's the first multi-team event win for the T-Birds in program history. This is basketball. Well, that... Effect yeah, but in. the effect oh, of baseball, I, I you that. The, it wasn't See? the dribbling, it was the I baseball. didn't even notice. Well, I <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people. Yeah, do you know the difference between baseball <laughs> and basketball? Sometimes. Tomorrow, uh, make no. sure you have highlights for the big Evans family turkey bowl. Turkey oh, bowl. It's tomorrow. a battle. <laughs> I think the Evans yeah, I'll be reporting from the emergency room. <laughs> the Evans win! <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Uh, we'll be right back. As we count our many blessings at this Thanksgiving time, we are thankful for you, our viewers, Absolutely. of Fox 13. Thanks for being with us tonight. Quick cast is next.